going to call in citizens to be heard. We have one citizen that would like to speak. Um, that would be Rusty Wise. So if you will come to the podium, stating your name and address before you speak, comments will be held to five minutes strictly <coughs> and made for you for five minutes. So you have the floor, Mr. Wise. Uh, Rusty Wise, 1204 Johnson Drive. I'm here to talk about the electric bill and the city electric <coughs> rates. Um, I know it's a hot topic in Cherryville, and I've had a lot of people asking me. So I looked at the general overall general budget, which is basically a 30,000 feet view of the budget. And I noticed a few things, and then I, I dug deeper into it. So I went and looked at the rates of Duke and uh, Rutherford Electric, or even REMC. And, uh, you know, a few percentages is a lot, a few cents is a lot. So I went and Duke is 28.44% less than general rates. Uh, Rutherford is 27.85%. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but that is a lot when you're comparing the C rates versus Duke and, and Rutherford. Uh, we do have a senior rate. I don't know if that's really published a lot, but I looked at that senior rate, and the senior rate is a 9,000 kilowatt hour max, and that's basically a one room apartment. You might want to look at that down the road and, and maybe up that because the senior rate, I think it's capped at $12,000 a year household. Yeah, and in today's time, that you're really restricting the senior citizens. So you might want to look at that, but if you compare the city with Duke and, our, and Rutherford Electric, uh, Duke uh, average yearly cost would be $951 savings a year, uh, $936 <coughs> with Rutherford. So it's substantial when well, citizens are paying more than that. So residential city customer versus Duke power uh, is paying $28 per $100. So that's $860 more per year. And that's at, you know, $250 cost. And that's about about right. And, and a commercial city customer versus Duke is $1,791. These are approximate numbers. And a commercial city customer versus Rutherford is uh, $2,481. So these are approximate numbers and, and the, it, the spread really goes up as consumption is more. So uh, a commercial user on average could easily spend $2,500 more a year by being on city power. And that is a lot of money in operating cost. So uh, you really have to look at that. There's only 2692 city electric meters. That's approximate. I know Dixie Walls helped me out a lot and Jeff has too. And there's some neighborhoods in this country larger than that. So we're restricted with the meters, but there's 10% of the city residents that are on Duke and REA. So that's 10% of the citizens that are getting this huge discount. And city council knows it, we've talked about it for years, but that's a discrepancy. That's thousands of dollars that you're making the city electric user pay. 10% of those customers that are on Duke and REA are, are, are getting substantial savings. So where am I going with this? Well, there's 15 employees tied to the electric fund, seven are full-time, and then there's eight admins tied to that. So 40% of your uh, basically payroll is an admin. So I don't know too many companies that can afford to do that when you're paying 40% in admin costs. I know no no service company can run like that. So just thought I'd throw that, throw that out. The grants are being paid out of this electric fund and I didn't realize that I've been involved with them. I thought the grants were paid by private funds, but I didn't know the grants were being pulled out of the electric fund. I've been involved in that. So you're basically penalizing the city electric user by paying for these grants. And you know, uh, there's a million dollar that was received from a private in individual that you have not even used that money yet. 
it's still sitting in the bank, my understanding. So you're basically pulling out of that electric fund, and I figured anywhere from 250000 to easily a half a million dollars a year, you're pulling out of that electric fund to fund other things. And it, it's, it, you, it's been done year after year after year after year, and that's why the electric rates are high. And you can't keep blaming it on the debt. So I might know my time's up, but that's that's your question. Grant, you mentioned the rest of the downtown like facade and roof. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you look at the budget, you have to really peel the onion away. But if you look at the budget, there's air conditioning units, roofing, uh, facade painting, awnings. This all kind of stuff has been paid out of the electric fund. All the design and engineering for this grant uh, for the water sewer was paid out of the electric fund. So you've basically penalized the city electric user by pulling money out of that fund. It's been done for years and years. And y'all have the power to stop that. That's why our rates are high. And, and the rates are an economic driver. I'm in real estate business and electric business, and that's a key economic driver is your electric rate. You've got to get that down. So how would you recommend a school about doing that? You've got to have a net neutral fund to where you, you keep the operating costs in that fund and stop spending money you in other that all at one time, so how, how should we do it? Well, there's some organizations that probably need to stand on their own. I, and they have membership fees. I mean, some of these organizations need to stand on their own with their payroll, with their things. I mean, should we wing them off gradually or should we do it all? Well, that's up to determine with the, the, the board here. I know what I do as a business person, but. So I'm asking you for advice. I would slowly wean some of the. You know, I would quit robbing or not robbing. I would quit divert funds out of electric fund for non-electric items. They have full, they have seven full-time employees, and there's up to a half million dollars that is taken out of that fund for other things. And it's there. I don't know if y'all look at the budget. The general budget doesn't really show it, but if you dive down into the numbers, you can see where a lot of money's gone. So, uh, it's the fiduciary duty of the, of the city manager and the mayor and the city council to make sure that the citizens that's on city power get their fair shake. And they're not. I mean, they keep every year, you, you hear it more in the summer time because they're using more power. But the word on the street is the city, the city general has high power. And it does. I mean, the numbers are right here. I've been saying that for a while. What is stop funding unnecessary electrical items out of that fund? Just stop it. You're going to have some special interest groups that might not like it. But you got to look what's in the best interest for this little old lady on Mulberry that can't afford to turn on the lights. I mean, we've got senior citizens that are scared to turn on their air conditioning. I will say that uh, the seven years that I've been mayor, uh, we have either been neutral or have given discounts on our electricity every year. We have not raised any in the seven years I've been mayor. We have not raised it. Well, the electric fund is, is a very uh, lucrative fund. You pull almost $7 million through that fund. At Fort Worth Water and Sewer, they had had any, they, they, they don't make a whole lot of fun in water and sewer, but the electric fund is a very lucrative fund that's been taken advantage of for many, many years. Mayor, I just want to remind council that we're under a rate study as we speak. And yeah. uh, although Brandon and Nixon, they've been working with AJ Moeller, when is we expected to get the new rate study released? We've got another meeting in December. We're hoping to be able to bring some definitely strategic plan. We'll definitely have it ready for y'all to review by our strategic plan uh, January. first Saturday or second Saturday in January, and then either you can take action then or put it off till we do the budget. 
for July 1st of 2021. Okay. All right. Thank you, Russ. And thank you for your time. Jeff, thank can you. I speak to one of the boys? Okay. Um, basically, the information I gave Rusty, and I shared it with Rusty, um, the electric fund does pay for admin, but it's a percentage of our salary. And any other city is going to pay for your electrical supervisor that supervises, or your public works director that supervises water sewer, supervises general fund, and supervises electric. It's going to pay your, for your finance director. Most of my days are spent on electric. Most of Jeff days are spent on electric. So that's the admin salaries that Rusty is talking about. Now, um, do I think we're using electrical funds or, or misappropriating funds or anything? No. Do I think Main Street? Yes. And what I was under a different administration, what was basically her was downtown is going to build up. We had how many residential meters come on this year? We've got more to come on. And if we can get more commercial and industrial and industrial paying their part, then our electric rates for the residents can go down. But it's on the back of the residents right now because we have had loss of economic development. So um, being the finance director and having the fiduciary responsibility by general statute of 159, we're fine. I think we're doing everything legal. I never accuse of anyone doing anything illegally. I just know that that fund has been, I would say abused, but it's been used pretty hard for the past 20, 30 years. And that's why we've never been able to get that debt paid off. I mean, it's like when you get a little extra money in it, it goes here. And there's 700 some thousand that came in it this year. Can I speak to the debt? Yeah, because she just had a meeting not long ago with how to direct the city, how to direct the money. Yeah, Electric City, um, I'm on the rate committee, and Electric City, we have 19 other cities that we're in. You can't pay the debt early. Okay, charitable can't pay their debt early. We have to vote. Um, we voted last time to pay the 700 thousand that we got as a cash payout off the bonds to the debt. That was charitable's one vote. And we voted to pay towards the debt. So Is that the a waiting vote? Yes. So the other 19 cities, they wanted to use the cash. Same thing with the million that we got this year. So, you know, as far as paying off the debt, we can't pay off our debt early. So there, that's that's null and void because we're in it with other cities. Okay. The mayor, uh, Matt, uh, like Gary said, what can you do? Put that money in a holding fund and decrease the rate to the citizens. That's you can do that. Ask. Can you put that money in escrow? And and you can do that. And, and, and take a Okay. Uh, of course, Mayor, part, of, part of that money, Mayor and Council, part of that money is went to put electrical lines underground uptown. Electrical has paid for its part uptown and it's paying cash. It wasn't part of the bond. It wasn't part of any of that. It actually paid for our lines to be put underground. That project's not 100% complete. That was the north side. Yes, sir. Because, because what you're going to have now is you see a bunch of cut off poles with a bunch of phone lines on them. That's going to be the next project that's going to be hit. Plus, you have the lighting plan that's going to be for downtown because the bonds were not for electrical. They were for actual beautification. So the electrical part of the downtown is going to be paid for by electrical. So you've also got those monies that will have to come out of that money as well. So we, we've already paid for part of it, but there's still going to be some expenses there that electrical will have to burden because it is electrical like the lighting plan, mm -hmm. the electrical charging stations, things like that. So there's still some costs coming. Okay. Mayor, as city manager, my goal 
uh, is to lower the rates in charitable, and we're looking at every avenue and every angle to try to do that. We understand that ours is a little bit higher, uh, but we're, going, we're slowly but sure we will rectify that. That's we might right? add that we know for a fact that Duke's is going up each year. He's so there's, going you're going to get a level playing field sooner or later. Is that cold. citywide? Mm -hmm. You're talking about citywide electrical rates reducing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well it's residential. You think you're talking about citywide? Well, we're talking about looking at the rate study and maybe leveling the pay playing field. Right now, commercial commercial is not carrying their weight. All the weights on the back of the residents. Every technician, every expert that's recommended to, we need to balance that. And uh, that's been doing, like Rusty said, for 40 years, ever since I've been here. But uh, we're looking at it. And uh, Brandon? Uh, yeah. And before we go to just comparing ourselves to the, to the investor owned utilities, let's also compare ourselves to the other cities and municipalities because these people are living there and paying their bills as well. So when you look at the cities of Gastonia and Lincoln and Shelby, we have to compare those rates as well. We can't just compare ourselves to a co-op with 80,000 customers or a Duke Energy with 150,000 customers. We have to look at other cities, especially our size and municipal electricity. You can't leave those out and just say, we're gonna be competitive with an investor owned that has 150,000 customers. You know, 150,000 $150, customers raises a lot of revenue. So it's, it's divided between those 150,000 people. You know, we have to concentrate on what we have. So let's compare ourselves to other municipalities too. We just keep saying Duke and REA. We're not saying Shelby, Gastonia, Lincoln, Morganton. You know, all these other towns, they have electric rates just like we do. So let's not leave that. And I think that rate study will show that. And one of the things I've asked Duke to do, Mayor, is we're gonna go to our sister cities and find out how they're using their electrical money, what percentage goes to help assist other projects. Because every city I know and city manager, they I do tell you, from I, I know that for a fact. Uh, for they example, take money from their electrical funds for other projects. The new baseball stadium in Gastonia is partly the unfunded with electrical funds. But I think the issue when we have 2,700 meters, I mean, that's it's hard to compare us with Shelby or Lincoln or Gastonia. But we're trying to do a lot with no more meter that we have and that's our goal to do it all this and spending this money in the grants is to be an economic development driver the old adage is it takes money to make money mm -hmm. yeah i'm not accusing anybody doing anything wrong i just say i just see ways to save a quarter to a half a million dollars a year that's not small money okay. thank you for yeah. yeah that's Certainly things we will be addressing in our strategic planning in January. So.